Generator, generator. Caution, caution. Welcome to the Target Designation Training Mission, in which we will cover the use of the many systems and sensors on the Harrier to identify, track, and accurately employ weapons, maintain speed of around 300 knots, and enable the AFC. Target designation is the action taken to identify the target or offset location to the weapon system. This allows for the employment of computed weapon delivery modes in auto, but can also aid in target detection for other delivery modes and can be performed in each of the master modes except AA master mode. There are three primary methods of self-designating targets, using the INS, the angle rate bombing system in conjunction with the dual mode tracker and TV mode, and finally the AN AAQ-28 Lightning II targeting pod. Let's begin with the INS. If the target coordinates are known, the most straightforward way of designating it is by creating a waypoint or an offset to a waypoint. In this example, your first target is a railway bridge near Tagalone. Its coordinates are on your kneeboard. Go ahead and create a new waypoint using these coordinates and let me know when it's done. Good, now make sure that the waypoint steering is boxed next to push button 11 and that the newly created waypoint is selected as an active one. Now select designate using push button 1. You will notice that the designate button becomes boxed and that the waypoint changes to the target diamond. The waypoint data block now also reflects the target data. Turn toward the target and navigate to it using the cues on your HUD and EHST page. The steering arrow will be displayed if your relative bearing is greater than 15 degrees. If you are in air-to-ground master mode, the steering arrow will be replaced by the aircraft steering line, or ASL, for an auto delivery once within 15 degrees of the target. The designated waypoint or waypoint offset appears on the HUD as the target designation or TD diamond symbol. Let me know when you acquire the bridge visually. Good. You can also use waypoint offset in a similar manner. The most common situation for that would be using bearing in degrees true and distance in nautical miles from a visually significant landmark, easily identified from the air. The only difference is that you need to box the offset steering instead of waypoint. The rest of the procedure remains exactly the same. On a side note, waypoints are never set on friendly units as a rule, due to concerns over friendly fire. If the waypoint was accidentally used in lieu of an offset, it would be a bad day all around, so pilots make it a point to never enter friendly locations in a manner that could accidentally find its way into a bomb. Finally, the pilot can also transfer a designation to a waypoint offset by overflying the waypoint and pressing the waypoint overfly or WOF push button on the UFC. Depending on whether a waypoint offset is available, WOS or waypoint may be designated. This action will automatically enter the AG Master Mode. The namesake INS designation is also known as a HUD designation. 
These terms are often used interchangeably. This is a visual designation requiring the target to be in the HUD field of view and the INS sensor mode selected. To select this mode, push the sensor select switch forward once. You should see the INS information in the top left corner of the MPCD. To display the TD diamond on the HUD, press the TDC switch. Designation occurs when you release the TDC. The diamond will appear in the middle of the velocity vector. You can now move the diamond around the HUD with the TDC. Holding the TDC down in the action mode slews quickly. Slewing the TDC normally in no action mode allows for refinement of a designation point. Strive to keep the designation at the intersection of the target and the ground to avoid entering false range information. Okay, let's try this in practice. Press the sensor select switch aft to exit the INS mode. Select waypoint 2 and fly toward it. Although you can slew the diamond around the HUD, the preferred method is to steer the aircraft and overlay the velocity vector on the target, and when they are coincident, tap the TVC, that is, press and release, to designate. Your next target is a warehouse in the vicinity of Waypoint 2. It is marked with red smoke. Using the method I just described, you will designate it and then sweeten the designation as you get closer. Push the sensor select switch forward once to return to INS mode. Now, maneuver your aircraft to overlay the velocity vector onto the target structure. When ready, press and release the TDC switch to designate it. Now, use no action slewing to place the diamond at the base of the structure where it intersects the ground. Very good, let me know when you are ready to move on to the next method. We will now cover the ARBS slash TV designation method, which is similar in practice to the INS method but uses the dual mode tracker in TV mode. First, make sure that the DMT is enabled on the miscellaneous switch panel. Now press the sensor select switch aft twice you should see ARBS slash TV visible on the right display. The DMT in TV mode is a daytime only device and has no night vision capability. It affords the pilot with a six times magnified image of the target. The magnification is fixed and cannot be changed by the pilot. With no target locked, the crosshairs are open and an aircraft symbol is visible in the middle. Before we practice using the DMT, let's have a look at the different options displayed on the MPCD. When boxed, Night disables the DMT TV video and shows only the DMT without video display. It is used to prevent the ARBS video from temporarily blinding the pilot during night conditions.
LST scan pattern has three different modes, wide, narrow, and HUD. It tells the DMT which pattern to use in search of the laser spot. Code enables the UFC for laser code input. The last option we are concerned with is filter, or FLTR, above push button 20. It selects which TV filter is used, yellow or red. The yellow filter is designed for low light conditions, while the red filter is for normal light conditions. The rest of the options displayed are standard for other pages and are covered in other lessons. Turn to waypoint 3. Your target, a frigate, should be in the vicinity. Now, the way to use the DMT in TV mode is very similar to an INS designation. Position the velocity vector on your target and then press and release the TDC in order to lock it. However, in this situation, it might be difficult to visually acquire the ship. Let's combine two different methods. Make sure that Waypoint 3 is selected on your left display and press push button 1 in order to designate it. You should now see the designation diamond on your HUD. Place the velocity vector on it and press sensor select switch aft twice to select the TV mode. Look at your right MPCD and use the TDC to locate your target if it is not immediately visible. Place the crosshairs in the middle of the ship and release the TDC to lock it. Again, as you get closer, you can use the no action slewing in order to sweeten the lock. The DMT is capable of tracking both stationary and moving targets. Now, the dual mode tracker has the dual part in the name for a reason. You can also use it in the laser spot tracker or LST mode. This will be covered in more detail in the Maverick training mission, and we won't be focusing on it today. Instead, we will take a closer look at the targeting pod and its capabilities. Please turn back towards waypoint 2 and let me know when you are ready to continue. The AN AAQ-28 Lightning II is a multi-sensor targeting and navigation system developed to provide the av 8 b night attack precision strike capability against surface targets. The T-Pod is equipped with a charge-coupled device, or CCD camera, and infrared thermal imaging system to generate video on either MPCD. It can be mounted on a centerline pylon or on stations 3 and 5. However, the wing stations are rarely used in practice, as the pod is more prone to masking and requires heavy trim or the use of counterbalance weight, often an unused 500-pound bomb, on the other side. In order to bring up the T-Pod on the MPCD, press push button 18 and then push button 13. You will see some initialization and bit data appear on the screen and disappear after some time. This may take as long as 4 minutes. By default the T-Pod is in standby mode, indicated by the underlined STBY legend next to push button 15. The T-Pod has many different modes and functions, but we will cover only the most relevant ones here. You can read about the others in the manual. Let's start with the data display mode. Go ahead and press push button 2. A number of new options are now visible, but the important one for us are SYM plus and SYM minus available under push buttons 3 and 4 respectively. You can use them to increase and decrease symbology intensity. OK, exit the data display mode by pressing push button 2 once again. Let's exit the standby mode. In order to do so, use push button 15. Now let's talk about the T-Pod control modes. These are aircraft HOTAS control mode, T-Pod Slew Control Mode, and T-Pod Hotas Control Mode. 
The aircraft hood task control mode is the default, indicated by TDC deselected, not underlined, next to push button 14. In this mode, the TDC does not move the teapot, but instead, the teapot is assigned to the aircraft's other sensors, meaning INS, DMT, or IRMAV. The teapot is slaved to the aircraft's designated target point, or, if there is none, caged at the boresight position. Let's see how it works in practice. Press the sensor select switch aft twice to enter the DMT TV mode. Now use the TDC to move it around. You'll notice the cue on the HUD as well as the TD diamond wherever you release the TDC. Switch back to the teapot on the right MPCD, exit the standby mode and make sure that the TDC is not underlined. Now salute the TDC again. On the HUD, you will see your usual DMT cross. Once you designate a new target, the teapot will automatically slave to it. Also, you can use the sensor select switch normally to change between different designation modes, for instance, INS and DMT. The second mode is the T-Pod Slew Control Mode. It is entered by pressing push button 14. Do it now. When activated, TDC next to push button 14 will appear underlined. In this mode, the TDC now controls the T-Pod movement. The aircraft's other sensors are slaved to the teapot stair point. Again, let's try it out in practice. Using the TDC, slew the teapot to an easily recognizable object or area. Let me know when you've selected a location. Now, press the sensor select switch aft to enter the DMT TV mode. You will notice that the DMT is looking at the same spot as the teapot. Additionally, if you try to move it using the TDC, it will automatically bounce back to the teapot's stair point.
Finally, we have T-Pod HOTAS Control Mode. In order to enable it, you have to double-click or press the sensor select switch down twice in less than 0.8 seconds. If you do it correctly, you should see the HTS legend next to push button 14. In this mode, both the TDC and sensor select switch are used to control the teapot, allowing you to operate it without releasing your throttle and stick. You slew the pod using the TDC, but you can also use short and long presses of the sensor select switch to change various pod functions, like area or point track mode, which pod sensor to use, IR polarity, and so on. You can exit HOTAS control mode by again pressing the sensor select switch twice in rapid succession, exiting the T-Pod MPCD page for longer than 15 seconds, or by selecting another sensor. The full list of commands is in your kneeboard. Practice them and let me know when you're ready to move on.
targeting pod operates in two visual modes, CCD or FLIR. You can switch between them using push button 5. Make sure you are in CCD and let me know when you're ready to proceed to the different push button options available. Push button 1 switches between wide and narrow field of view. The currently selected mode is underlined. Push button 2 enters the data page which we covered earlier. Push button 3 and 4 are used to zoom in and out. The zoom level ranges between 0 and 9 and is displayed between the push buttons. Please remember that you cannot zoom in or out using the HOTAS even when in the HTS mode. Push buttons 6 through 9 are used to control the laser. We'll cover these in the final part of this lesson. Push button 14 shows the currently active control mode. Aircraft HOTAS, T-Pod SLU, or T-Pod HOTAS. Push button 15 is used to switch the T-Pod in and out of standby mode. Push button 16 slaves the pod sensor to the aircraft's designated target. Push button 17 enters Laser Spot Search, or LSS mode. The T pod automatically transitions to LST, or Laser Spot Track mode, upon detecting a properly coded laser energy spot. Obviously, this mode is very useful when finding targets painted with a laser by a JTAC or your wingman. Finally, push buttons 19 and 20 govern the track mode of the T pod. INR is the Inertial Navigation Reference Track Mode. It is used to track the selected INS point that the sensors are looking at rather than a specific image or target. We'll return to it shortly. Area and point track are mutually exclusive. Area keeps the T-Pod locked on to a specific spot, while point can be used to track moving targets. The problem with both, however, is that if the target which you are following gets masked, for instance by a hill, cloud, or your own aircraft, the pod can inadvertently begin tracking the intervening object. In an inertial or INR track, however, it will still attempt to track the intended spot on the ground even during masking. Therefore, if you are following something in AP or PT and you can see that the view is going to be blocked, your instinct should be to temporarily switch to INR until the target is visible again. Do note that an inertial track may drift over time. Okay, when you're ready, press push button 5 again to switch to FLIR mode and we'll cover some additional features. Push button 11 now displays the WH slash BH legend, which stands for white hot slash black hot, and changes the IR polarity accordingly. Some objects may be more visually distinct in one or the other polarity, so it is important to switch between them occasionally and choose the polarity best suited to the target. Push button 12 and 13 are used to increase and decrease the IR gain between 1 and 8. The rest of the buttons are the same as CCD. Now let's move on to the final part of the lesson and cover the use of the laser. The T-Pod is equipped with three different operating modes, the Training Laser, or TRNL, Laser Marker, or MRKR, and Laser Designator, or LASR. You can switch between them using push button 9 in the top row.
Laser marker is used for marking the target with an IR beam visible through night vision goggles. Laser designator is used to perform range finding operations, guide laser guided weapons to their target, and can be used to mark targets for LSS equipped aircraft. Training laser does not emit energy, it is only used, as its name implies, for training purposes and dry fires with appropriate cockpit symbology. Once you select the desired laser operation, you can use push button 6 to arm it or return it to safe mode. With either the marker or designator selected, you can use push button 7 to perform a short duration laser range measurement of less than 3 seconds. If in marker mode, the T-Pod will automatically switch to laser for the duration of the range finding measurement. Finally, when the selected type of laser is armed, you may fire it using push button 8. When the beam is active, the fire legend is underlined. When selected again, it stops firing. <laughs> Lastly, one final designation method before we end this mission, the target of opportunity, allowing for low-level head-up designation of unplanned targets. When pushed on the UFC, TOO creates a designation directly below the aircraft as the target, automatically turning on the radar altimeter, switching to air-to-ground master mode, and, if a weapon was previously selected, calling up the last weapon and delivery program for immediate attack. And that's about it. You can undesignate a target at any time by pressing the undesignate button on the control stick, by pressing the designate button on the EHSD display, or entering AA master mode but covering the other minor designation methods and other lessons. If you have any fuel left, feel free to practice the different methods of target designation. There are some targets on our usual range next to waypoint 1. You can exit the mission at any time. I hate to crush your dreams, but the Super Death Ray Armor Melting Laser Beam did not make it to the final version of the Lightning 2 targeting pod. However, DCS does have an active modding community, so I don't know. Maybe with a cheat code? Perhaps up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start? Maybe? I don't know, just throwing ideas out here.